On Wednesday, January 10th, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission approved 11 Bitcoin ETFs. BlackRock, Grayscale, and Fidelity's ETFs were all included. This is seen as a major win for Bitcoin and crypto in general, mostly because Bitcoin ETFs could open the floodgate to trillions of dollars of wealth management money. With that said, since the release of this information, the price of Bitcoin has actually gone down. Huh? Wait, no, that can't be right. It's gone up. No, it's gone down. And on top of that, days after the release, crypto market sentiment is actually neutral, shown by the Fear and Greed Index. Again, what? Huh? Wouldn't presumably good news like this cause Bitcoin's price to go up and the Fear and Greed Index to move further into greedy territory? That is one of the two things I want to talk about here today. Will Bitcoin ETF's approval do anything? for Bitcoin and for the crypto market in general? And will it be a net positive or a net negative for cryptocurrency? And then at the end, I wanna give you my opinion on which one of these ETFs I think is the best for the average investor. So let's talk about that. As always, my name is Derek and I got my degree in finance. So you don't have to, let's get right into it. So first and foremost, the most logical explanation for Bitcoin's price decrease is probably just buy the rumor, sell the news. There has been a lot of hype around a Bitcoin ETF and for most people, they thought it was just a matter of time. So those who purchased ahead simply sold the news for profit. This is a pretty standard event in investing and we see it all the time. But there's probably also one more thing leading to down downward pressure. The halvening, which is less than 100 days away. What is it and why? Well, the theory is, as usual, money. Always follow the money. When the Bitcoin halving, halving, ha halving, halving, Steve Madden. When the Bitcoin halvening happens in April, it will see the block reward for Bitcoin miners cut in half, falling from 6.25 to 3.125 Bitcoin. So naturally, miners are anticipating this and booking some profits. In fact, according to Bitcoin News, miners' outflow hit a six-year high at over $1 billion that was sent to exchanges. So the downward movement after the ETF approved can probably be written off as related to the news event itself. So does that mean that Bitcoin ETFs are actually a positive, even though price says otherwise? While I'm going to dive much deeper into this, of course, let's get my opinion out of the way. Yes, I think it's a positive. It shows more acceptance from a regulatory standpoint, and it lowers the bar to actually investing into Bitcoin to pretty much everyone. And yes, Bitcoin was already not that difficult to buy. I get that. But think about like your grandma trying to make a Coinbase account and then go and buy Bitcoin. Yes, it's possible. And yes, some cool ass grandmas probably already did this. But this opens the door to virtually everyone because ETFs are at the end of the day a common and a well-trusted investment vehicle. So from a price perspective, which at the end of the day is more than anything else a demand perspective, this should increase demand and more demand with an asset that has a fixed supply should be a net positive. Now, a lot of people are making the comparison between this and when gold had its first ETF. Gold prices did increase dramatically after that. And for a lot of people, this is digital gold. So it's natural to make that comparison. And it is a fair comparison. With that said, there are some key differences that we need to be aware of. The main one is that before the gold ETF was released, it was actually quite difficult and annoying to buy gold. You basically needed to physically own the asset. So when the ETF came along, this basically opened the floodgates for retail demand. But Bitcoin is a bit different than that, although there is pros and cons. You see, Bitcoin was and is already pretty easy to buy. You log into Coinbase or any other reputable site, and you buy it. So most of the retail demand is already there, unlike when gold first released its ETF. But on the flip side, the institutional money has not been here, whereas it already was for gold. So yes, a Bitcoin ETF probably doesn't bring much retail demand, but it will open the floodgates for institutions, funds, pensions, retirement accounts, etc., to finally own Bitcoin. And some estimates put it at anywhere from 50 to 100 billion dollars of capital inflow. And that money and that status is arguably more and better for Bitcoin's future, as it might finally solidify Bitcoin as a certified, regulatory approved and managed asset. And that status plus a ton of institutional money should make it more real and legitimate in the minds of old school investors. So yes, 
All else being equal, this is a positive for Bitcoin. All right, now let's talk about which Bitcoin ETF is the best for you to buy. Because there are a few and they all have different expense ratios, which means each one could come out costing you completely different from another one. Okay, so which is best? Which one should you buy? None. None of them. Look, if you're going to be a serious investor and you care about your financial future, buy the asset. If, and I'm not saying you should, but if you are going to buy Bitcoin, be a f***ing investor about it and buy a physical wallet or get a free online wallet and buy the asset yourself. And if you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this, I can absolutely put one together for you guys. So just let me know. But seriously, why in the utter f*** would you pay a management company anywhere from 0.2% to 1.5% per year to manage an asset that you can absolutely by yourself. Look, if you're watching this video, it means that you're on YouTube, which means that you have internet access and you have a general understanding of how the internet works, which means you can probably figure out how to buy Bitcoin for yourself. And again, if you can't, that is okay. Just let me know and I will gladly put a step-by-step -step guide so you can buy Bitcoin for yourself without having to pay someone else a management fee. And if you buy it yourself, there's just a couple things that you gotta remember. Don't lose your fucking private keys and your login information. And don't give that information to literally anyone. And I think you'll be fine. <sighs> okay, rant over. Now, for those of you who actually need to buy the ETF for retirement or tax purposes, because there, of course, are legitimate scenarios where you'd rather buy the ETF than the asset themselves, which one's the best? Well, really, it comes down to a balance between expense ratio, which is your cost, and the brand of the ETF. Because on one side, you don't wanna to pay too much money, and on the other side, you don't wanna buy some sketchy ETF that might not be around in 10, 20, or 30 years. Now, all the ETFs that were released are probably safe, but I would put Fidelity close to the top. It has almost the lowest expense ratio at 0.25%, and it has a brand name that's been around for over 70 years. And yes, Bitwise ETF has a lower expense ratio, but again, has it been around for 70 plus years? Remember, it's a balance between the cost and the reliability of the brand behind the ETF. And Fidelity has a pretty big brand name and has been around for a while, and it still comes close to being the lowest expense ratio. Now, I have no horse in the race. I don't care which one you pick. I just think that you should balance cost and reliability with the ETF that you choose. So with that said, there you have it. Bitcoin is finally mainstream. <laughs> And I think this overall is a very strong signal for its growth, mostly because it allows institutions and big money to finally enter the cryptocurrency game in the form of an ETF, bought and sold on all major exchanges and on all major brokerages. Now remember that this is one event, but all else being equal, this is a very positive event for Bitcoin. With that said, this is one event and Bitcoin still remains pretty risky and its true use case is still a little murky. Is it a store value? digital gold per se? Is it a currency? Is it a security? Is it a commodity? And in the end, where does it fit in the grand world financial system? Once that's answered definitively, Bitcoin will take its place. Until then, this is a very good sign, but it's still a very risky asset, which again means diversify. Your portfolio should be made up of many different assets and Bitcoin or a Bitcoin ETF can make up some of it, but it should not make up all of it. I hope this video was informative and I hope you're now up to date on what's going on in the crypto world and in regards to a Bitcoin ETF. If you like personal finance, world economics, and investing broken down simply, you are in the right place. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already. This is a relatively new YouTube channel and it helps us tremendously. And if you haven't, please turn on the bell notification so you don't miss the next video. Usually new videos come out on Tuesdays, but sometimes I'll do a video Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday if something very important needs to be talked about. I'll try to bring that to you guys as quickly and as soon as I can. Other than that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.